Hello, boys and girls, and here are some identities verified. Um, just remember that when we're verifying identities, we have to work independent of each side. Work only on the left, only on the right. Try to transform. Obviously, we try to pick the side that's more complicated. In this case, it would be the left. And I am going to attack this one using this secant as my common denominator for both terms in the numerator. So secant x over secant x minus cosine over secant. Secant over secant is 1. And just like we talked about in class, we can pop that secant x up to the top using the reciprocal identity, and the reciprocal of secant is cosine. So we end up with cosine times cosine, which is cosine squared, and 1 minus cosine squared is sine squared, and that is our right side. So it is verified. That is a pretty easy one. Next, another easy one here. So cosine time secant, all over tangent. Now, if you recall, cosine and secant are reciprocals of each other. So if we multiply them together, we do indeed get 1, and then we have 1 over tangent, and of course 1 over tangent is equal to cotangent. So we are verified. Again, that's another easy one. Mostly using reciprocals. Next, one that's a little bit more, hmm. So here we've got 1 plus tangent squared over 1 minus tangent squared. And of course, we know from Pythagorean identities that 1 plus tangent squared is equal to secant squared. So here we have secant squared over 1 minus tangent squared x. So, from here, let's go to sine and cosine. So if we go to sine and cosine here, secant squared is 1 over cosine squared. And um, let's deal with the tangent squared first, and it'll give us some direction as to what to do with the 1. So tangent squared, of course, is sine squared over cosine squared. Now I wanted to let you see that if we change the secant to its reciprocal, change the tangent to be in terms of sine and cosine, so far we've got everything over cosine squared. So let's take the next step and let's rewrite this whole number 1 in terms of the common denominator which is cosine squared. So let's change the 1 to cosine squared over cosine squared. So one thing we can easily take um, advantage of here is the fact that every single part of this fraction has cosine squared as a denominator. And if you have a common denominator all the way throughout your fraction, we can cancel them. And we are left with 1 over cosine squared x minus sine squared x, which is our right-hand side. Another exciting problem. Here we've got secant over secant x minus tangent x. Um, we can attack this one using the reciprocal identity. So let's flip this secant to the bottom. When we flip this secant to the bottom, we get 1 over secant x times secant x minus tangent x. And when we distribute this secant, whoa, not secant x. Emergency, emergency, calls for correction tape. Let's fix what I just said. When we pop that secant to the bottom, it becomes cosine.
which is the reciprocal of the secant. Okay, it's now corrected. And from there, we can use the distributive property here and get 1 over cosine times secant is 1. And cosine times tangent, remember, tangent is sine x over cosine x. So cosine over 1 times sine over cosine, cosines cancel, and we end up with 1 minus sine x. So that is our left-hand side. Let's leave it right there. Let's work on the right-hand side now. So let's use the distributive property again, and this is going to give us secant squared x plus secant times tangent. So remember, if we've got secant x times tangent x, let's rewrite this side now in terms of sine and cosine. So this is 1 over cosine squared, and secant is another 1 over cosine. Tangent is sine x over cosine x. So we end up with 1 plus sine x over, remember, multiply those together, cosine squared plus cosine squared. So cosine squared is our common denominator. Of course, everybody should know now that cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared. So 1 plus sine x over 1 minus cosine, whoop, 1, come on, magic tape, 1 minus sine squared x. And this guy, of course, is factorable. It's the D-O-T-S. So we factor it. 1 plus sine x over 1 plus sine x times 1 minus sine x. Cancel, cancel. We end up with 1 over 1 minus sine x, which is the same as the left. That one is definitely a bit more challenging. And this last one is just straight up hard. So if we have cosine over 1 minus sine equals sine minus cosecant over cosine minus cotangent. So I'm going to try it one way. Hopefully some of you will turn off the video and give it a shot on your own. I think the best option here is to let's first attack this right hand side. So sine minus cosecant. We're going to sine and cosine. So sine theta minus 1 over sine theta over cosine minus cotangent is cosine over sine. So what I'm seeing here is that we should get a common denominator of sine. So to get a common denominator of sine, we got to multiply this by sine. And we got to multiply this guy by sine. So this is going to turn into, and remember what we said in a previous problem in this video, is that once you have a common denominator throughout this complex fraction, this is what this is called, once you get that common denominator, you don't need it anymore. It's gone. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. So we end up with sine squared minus 1 over sine theta cosine theta minus cosine, which all of this is factorable. So let's factor here. So we end up with, actually, let's don't factor yet. Let's rename sine squared minus 1. If we have sine squared minus 1, that's the opposite of 1 minus sine squared. So instead of being cosine squared, it is negative cosine squared over. Now in the bottom, we can factor out this cosine as it is the greatest common factor. 
So cosine theta times sine theta minus one. So what do we have left here? We've got, first of all, this cosine is gonna cancel with one power of that cosine, leaving us negative cosine theta over sine theta minus one. And then something that we learned way, 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 way back in probably August is that I can take out a negative one, so let this be negative one times cosine theta over. And then if I flip those terms to one minus sine theta, it will also factor out that negative one. Those will cancel, and I am left with the left-hand side. That is one way to do that problem. I did it earlier another longer way. So those are um, a few problems, good problems, solid problems, verifying using substitution, using a common denominator, using conjugates. So looking forward to seeing you in class.